to be with all of you this morning. We welcome you. We are so glad that God has brought you to, to this place uh, and has moved in your life in such a way that we all get to gather together this morning. We want to celebrate over that fact uh, that you are here. At the end of each of your pews, there is a black pad, and on that pad, uh, there are some cards uh, on which you can let us know that you are worshiping with us here today. So I invite you to take that and fill it out for yourself and whoever you might be here with. If uh, you are new to us, we would especially love the opportunity to reach out and say hello to you. Uh, so I encourage you to, uh, to fill that out with whatever contact information you'd like. Uh, and we will reach out and say hi and help you get to know FUMC uh, a little better. There's a lot going on in our life together as the people of God, and so we want to tell you about just a few of those things. Uh, one, let me give you an update on our Dreaming Like Jesus campaign. We are coming to the end of that this week. So if you have not had an opportunity or if you have not been able yet to get your pledge card in and you intend to do that, it would be a tremendous help if we could do that by the end of this week. Uh, you can see some of the numbers there in your bulletin, but I'll give you a little bit of update. We're actually down now to 29 or to about 27 commitment cards that we still expect will probably come in, and we're looking for about uh, 115,000 more that will get us to that 90% uh, goal. So we are getting really, really close. Uh, so help us out there uh, for all of the amazing things you've been hearing about over the last several weeks um, that we'll be looking forward to doing in the year to come, being in ministry together in this place and in our community. Um, and so uh, let's, uh, let's look forward to that this week. A couple other things going on. If you want to have a, a poinsettia placed here in uh, worship on December 18th, uh, there is a deadline for that, and they're $15 each. The deadline to order is December 13th, uh, and you can see all of the details about that right there in the bulletin, so I encourage you to check that out. Uh, we've also had a change of date for our charge conference. Uh, you should have gotten an email if you're, if you're on charge conference and administrative council about this already, but just to note, that has been moved. It was going to be this week, but we had the storms, and so now uh, it will be on uh, Tuesday, December the 12th there in Wesley Hall. Uh, and you might also notice uh, some angels uh, or some Christmas trees here over in Wesley Hall and also over in the gathering room. On those trees, you'll find some ornaments with angels on them. That's for the Salvation Army Angels and the Delta Angels program. You can get one of those and on it you'll find a list of uh, some presents to get for children in need in this community and also over in Quitman County and the Delta Mission that we're partnering with there. And so grab those. I've always just been overwhelmed at the response of our church to make sure that we're caring for, for folks in our community and especially with that, those programs. So if you haven't had a chance to get one, they may be going fast. So uh, check it out there over in the gathering room. And if there's not one there, you can go over to Wesley Hall and find one there. Well, that's a little of what's going on in our life together as the people of God. Let's now turn our hearts and our minds to worship.
of Jesse, who stands for an ensign of the people, before whom kings shall keep silence, and to whom the Gentiles shall make their supplication, come, come and, deliver and deliver us, us and, and tarry, tarry not. not. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may celebrate aright the commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming and glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Uh, 
I was a little nervous, four-year-old bladders aren't what they used to be, but we're here. Um, all right, this morning we have a reading from Isaiah 1 through 10, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what is his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall pull its hands on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. We light this candle as a sign of peace. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way of our salvation, Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pray with me. Your word, holy God, was written for our instruction. By your Holy Spirit, open our ears and fill us with the mysteries of your ancient love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our Psalter is Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge the people with righteousness and the glory of justice. justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people. Give deliverance to me and crush the oppressors. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the long grass, like showers that water the earth. In his day may righteousness flourish, 
and peace abound until the moon is no more. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. gospel lesson comes to us this day from Matthew's gospel, the third chapter. I'll begin reading at verse 1, and I'm reading from the message translation this morning. While living, while Jesus was living in the Galilean hills, John, called the baptizer, was preaching in the desert country of Judea. His message was simple and austere, like the desert surroundings. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. John and his message were authorized by Isaiah's prophecy, thunder in the desert. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. John dressed in a camel hair habit tied at the waist by a leather strap. He lived on a diet of locust and wild field honey. People poured out of Jerusalem, Judea, 
and the Jordanian countryside to hear and see him in action. There at the Jordan River, those who came to confess their sins were baptized into a changed life. When John realized that a lot of the Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for a baptismal experience because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded. Brood of snakes, what do you think you were doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skins is going to make you different? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and flourishing? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand. This main character will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He is going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. And everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for you, the people of God. And so, today, my friends, having been stung by the gospel lesson, we are called into a new way of living. Whether we are hearing the call of the camel hair, locust-eating John the Baptist, to bear fruit worthy of repentance, or whether we are longing for Isaiah's peaceable kingdom, we come. We come acknowledging that today is the opportunity to move from an old way of life into a new way of living. John Wesley, whom some of us call Father Wesley, known as the founder of Methodism, said in his work three simple rules that we who are called Methodist people are called to a Wesleyan way of life. That we are called to do no harm. That we are called to do good. And that we are called to stay in love with God. 
Reuben Job said that these three simple rules have the power to change the world around us. He goes on to share that we live in such a fast pace frenzied, complex world, that it is easy to believe that we are all trapped into being something that we do not wish to be, and that we are trapped into living a life that we do not wish to live. We long for a way that's different, don't we? We long for a way to, to cut through the heartache. We cry out, for a way to overcome the push and shove lifestyle, the mean-spirited social post that occasionally we see, the dog-eat-dog -dog type of world, so to speak. We long for something that is different. And so many of us today hear this call, especially during these beautiful, holy days of Advent, the season of expectation and preparation, we come truly believing that there is good in humanity, and that there is goodness which longs for another way. There is goodness that longs for Isaiah's peaceable kingdom. But if we're honest with ourselves, we say, but how? How do we make this radical shift? The lyrics of two very familiar Advent hymns that we have shared together this morning express how we feel. But they may also help us lean into the answer. Brother Charles Wesley penned these words, Come thou long-expected Jesus. Born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Then as we have just sung, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. How many of you have heard that Christmas is for children? Some of you heard that? Christmas is for children. Well, I must still be a child. For I love Christmas. I love Advent. I love this beautiful season. I love sights, the sounds, the music. I really love the food and all that goes along with that. Yesterday was a very special day for me. It was a day in which I had the opportunity to think through the mind of a child, to look through the lens of a child. For early in the day, I was called back to a former appointment to preach and to offer the eulogy at the funeral of a dear friend. My friend's name was Mr. Drussell Bailey. He was a member of St. James United Methodist Church in Amory, Mississippi. Drussell was a man who was filled with the gift of hospitality. He was associated with Gilmore Hospital and Gilmore Foundation for over 30 years. When you walked into the door of those establishments, you met Drussel, and he welcomed you in what I will call a Methodist 
Christ-like spirit. Drussel was literally larger than life. I had the opportunity to work side by side with Drussel for about five years in my appointment beyond the local church with congregations for children. Drussel was fondly known as the jelly dog for Gilmore Early Learning Initiative. And he traveled with me all over North Mississippi, and in particular, Monroe County, greeting children, encouraging children to read, calling parents to spend time reading to their children. I saw within Drussel the Spirit of God. I saw within him a spirit that welcomed everyone, in particular, in particular those who yearned to be found, those who were the least, the last, and the lost. Because of people like him, our world can be transformed. And then last evening, Last evening, I came together, along with many of you, to experience the Nutcracker. Many of our children were on the stage. Many of you were there. And in this production, we witnessed a young girl befriend a Nutcracker who comes to life on Christmas Eve and wages a battle against an evil mouse king. Oh, my friends, that we might have the heart of a child. Oh, my friends, that we might not come slithering into the baptismal waters, but that we might come with joy, knowing that the Holy Spirit burns within our heart and that through that burning we desire that all might come to know God in Jesus Christ, his Son. We asked earlier, how might our hearts be changed? We ask, how might our life be different? And I ask you, as you prepare to come to the table this morning and as you prepare to meet the Christ child once again on Christmas Eve, how will you come? Will we come expecting, expecting to find God? God gives us what we need to see this peaceable kingdom come into being. It is there for our claiming. It is the gift to us in this holy season. It came when we were baptized at the font, and it is still alive and is with us this day. Oh, my friends, we are no longer a slithering brood of vipers. We are God's peaceable kingdom. And we are called to do no harm, to do good, and to stay in love with God. May it be so with you and with me as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Service of word and table. Hear now the invitation to the table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Friends, I invite you to pass the peace of Jesus Christ to a neighbor who is sitting beside you.
pray and give you thanks, Holy One, for all good things. For this universe and for earth itself, for creatures and plants, for water and food, for light and darkness. For Jesus, our brother, who enlarged our vision, setting himself before us as the bread and wine of abundant life. And for the Holy Spirit, who comes to us in baptism and moves in our midst with the power to lead us to you, turning our offerings to your goodwill and turn us always to you in gratitude. Amen. the right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets who looked for that day when justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn of war no more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the light to the nations. You scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich send empty away. Your own Son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, a presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which 
He gave himself up for us. He took the bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. But this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me and be thankful. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me and be thankful. So, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God. confidence of the children of God let us pray together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. Your friends, I remind you this day, for we have many who are visiting with us this morning. Yes, we are a United Methodist congregation, but this is not a United Methodist table. This is God's table, and all are welcome here. So as God's spirit moves with your spirit, you are invited to come. With those who will be assisting us, please come now.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may be with one voice, so that together with one voice glorify the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Mm -hmm. 